All right, so I'd like to show you how to go ahead and create a library and then start referencing it from the application where you were originally going to, where you originally had the library code. So here we have our application and let's just create a main method and say, um, uh, perform some calculations. So we're just going to have a method here that um, adds up these results. So we just say return i plus i1 plus i2. And now when we print this out, it should print out 6. Okay, great. You can see the value here is being printed out. So if you were doing something like this or something more complicated, you would um, you might want to pull it out into a library so that your other projects can use it, or so that other people um, who might be interested in this code can also use it. So the first thing to do is just go ahead and create a new project. And I'm going to make a Gradle Kotlin project. You can call this whatever you want, of course. And we're going to open this up in a new window so that we can have it open at the same time. Um, so, because I have Java 9 installed and um, just uh, it, on the Gradle task, it's confused because it's an older version of Gradle. So, um, bear with me for a moment. If you change the JDK here to use Java 8, um, it's not really important, but that's how I get around this for now. And then once this is initialized, it creates a um, it creates a Gradle directory, and then you can change the version of Gradle to a later version um, normally. Uh, We have to create the wrapper task. And then you go to wrapper properties here and you change this to four point whatever. And then refresh and okay. And it downloads and you're set. And you can use Java 9 again if you want. Um, that's not really what I'm trying to share though. Uh, so if you create a the directory source slash domain slash Kotlin, um, we can now start performing our create start creating our library stuff. So you say math utils, and we switch over to the old application, and we want to move move this function over. And um, so now the source code part is done. Um, the next step is to publish your library into your local Maven repository so that your application can pick it up and start using it. So to do this, in your library, go over to your build.gradle and we're going to add a new plugin. After your other plugin, uh, go ahead and add Maven publish. And after you import this, this will give you a new task, um, a new Gradle task, publish to Maven local. If you run this, it works, but it doesn't really do anything. So the Maven Publish plugin, you have to tell what you want it to do before it can actually actually work. So if you look at the Maven Publish documentation um, and uh, scroll down a little bit, um, the first example here is adding a Maven publication for a Java component. This is what you want. It also works for Kotlin. So if we just copy this into our library, at the bottom, or wherever, it doesn't really matter, and you import, then when you do a publish now, now it'll actually do the compile, and it'll do the jar, and it'll do the publish. So um, we're not quite done yet, but 
uh, we'll come back to this in a moment. Um, so now the next step is from the application to actually start consuming the library that we just published. So this is two steps. Um, if we switch back to our application and we open up the build.gradle file, uh, the first thing you have to do is add a new repository to tell uh, Gradle to look um, for your, their, your library locally. And it's called Maven Local. And you want to put this above all the other repositories so that it has um, top priority. Because otherwise, if you put it below, then um, if your library is on Maven Central, it'll prefer that one instead, which is probably not what you want. So the next step is uh, you actually have to model the dependency. Your application has to declare the dependency on the library. And so you're going to say whatever you, know, whatever you put for, for your library, uh, whatever group ID and artifact ID and version. And that should be it. So once we import these changes, we look at our application. The, the method is no longer read. And um, yeah, so. Uh, normally, you'll have to do an import um, because hopefully you aren't using a top-level package like I am, uh, which is kind of an anti-pattern. But this is just for the just as an example. So one so this works if you if you run um, if you run this example, you get six, which is you know the result of adding up these numbers. Uh, and if, but if you control click through, you'll see you get a decompiled class file, and that you can't actually um, it's all just compiled code. And you can decompile, but that's not, um, it's still pretty ugly. Uh, but it's, you know, good enough if you want to set breakpoints. Um, so there's actually something better you can do, uh, but it requires making a change on the, um, on the library side. So if you switch back to the library and you go down to the bottom of the build.gradle, um, we're publishing the class files. Um, .java, compose.java here is basically just the class files. Um, but if you want to prep uh, then the sources as well, then if you go back to the Maven documentation, the very next example talks about creating a source jar. So um, this is actually what we want. So if instead you take the second example and you just copy it over back to your library and replace what we had before. And um, this, is, this, is, this will almost work. Uh, so this source jar is created from the all Java task uh, source set, which as far as I can tell is class files and Java source files. It does not include Kotlin source files. So if we copy this line and change this last word to Kotlin, and then we do an import, and then we publish, then it will create a new, alongside of the original jar, it will create an additional source jar that contains the uh, Kotlin and Java and class files. So if we switch back to our application, and just to be sure, we can do a refresh. And now if we open, perform some calculations, now the source code is right here. So you still can't modify it because it's, it's a compiled file from another jar. Um, but at least you can see it as long, along with any documentation or lack thereof that you have. So one of the nice things about doing local development, of course, is that you can make a change in the other package in the library and see it reflected in your application, which you know, if you're doing development kind of on both at the same time is likely to be a pretty common workflow. So here we, hit, we're, we have a, um, it adds up to six. But if we go back to our library and we want to change the way this works, let's say we want to add four, um, you still need to run publish to Maven local from your library, but from your application, you don't need to synchronize or anything. You can just run it. And now it'll be 10, as expected. So next time I'm going to talk more about um, what the kind of next step after this is. After your, you, if you have the library and it's done and you want to make it available either across multiple of your projects and not just in your local machine, um, or if you want to actually share the library with the world. So uh, I'll go over some of the different options available there. Thanks for watching.